Just before the last election, the headlines over MPs' expenses appalled the nation. For years, claims made by politicians were kept secret. In 2009, the floodgates were opened and many were named and shamed for using taxpayers' money to fund their lifestyles. Some even went to prison for it. I am completely appalled. Most of my colleagues are appalled. People want something done about this. Is this a legitimate use of expenses? Taxpayers' money was used to fund things like bath plugs and clearing moats in grand country estates. But as to the claims that I made, they were agreed in, in advance and in writing and fall within both the spirit and the letter of the rules. But some of the most serious claims were on interest payments for mortgages on MP second homes. Many of them were in London and were sold for a handsome profit. In 2010, this practice came to a shuddering halt. But the new rules which were introduced don't appear to be perfect. An investigation by this programme has found that since 2012, 46 MPs have claimed for rent or stays in London hotels, despite already owning a property in the capital. And many of those MPs bought their properties under the previous scheme at the taxpayer's expense. And this is where most of your money is going, the tree-lined streets surrounding Westminster, with period features, fine dining, and just a short walk to Parliament. Our analysis reveals that the 46 politicians we've identified have claimed almost £1.4 million over a two-year period. So how does it all work? Well, most MPs outside of London will have a constituency home. Under the old rules, they could also buy a home in London and charge the taxpayer for mortgage interest payments. That was all banned in 2010 in light of the expenses scandal. And under new rules, when MPs stay in London, they can either stay in a hotel or they can rent a property with an allowance of about £20,000 a year. But what happened to all of those properties which were bought under the previous system? Well, some MPs are now earning rental income from those properties. Take, for instance, the SNP's Angus McNeil. He jointly owns three properties which he rents out, a house in Fort William, a flat in Glasgow, and a flat in Lambeth, central London. However, over a three-year period, he's also claimed over £42,000 to stay in smart hotels in Westminster. This is the block where Angus McNeil owns his flat in London. Now, when he stays in town, he lives out of a hotel just down the road. But it's not as if this is very far away from Westminster. In fact, his walk to work would take him just 15 minutes, a luxury by anyone's standards, with his flat being less than a mile from the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> Mr McNeil told us that the current rules were to blame and that MPs should be allowed to claim for the flats they own, as they did in the past. And while Angus McNeil has claimed for hotels, most of the MPs we've investigated are claiming rent after letting out the flats they own. This is Sir Nick Harvey, a Liberal Democrat MP and former Defence Minister. In 2002, he bought a house in Lambeth and claimed expenses to help pay his mortgage. But after that was banned in light of the expenses scandal, he moved out and let the house to tenants. Since then, he's rented a separate flat in the same area, which has so far cost the taxpayer just under £40,000 in expenses claims. Sir Nick Harvey told us the current rules compelled him to rent a separate flat to live in because he can no longer claim for his mortgage. He said the new rules may have been brought in with the best of intentions, but may have ended up costing the taxpayer more than before. All the MPs who got back to us insist their claims are within the rules which were drawn up by the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority after the expenses scandal. A principle of those rules states that members of parliament must not exploit the system for personal financial advantage. We took our findings to Sir Alistair Graham, the former chairman of the Committee for Standards in Public Life. So there are 46 MPs claiming vast sums of money for rental and hotel accommodation, despite owning homes in the capital. Does that sound acceptable to you? No, it doesn't. Uh, it sounds to me that they're exploiting the system in a way that the public would be shocked at. And it's not always just about what exactly does the rule say. It is about you taking personal responsibility that public funds are used in a proper and appropriate way that your constituents will be comfortable with. 
Labour is not immune either. In fact, of the 46 MPs, 14 were from the main opposition. Jim Murphy is the leader of the Scottish Labour Party. Today he was launching the party's campaign in Scotland. The Register of Members' Interest reveals he owns a property just two miles from Westminster, which he lets out. Yet over a two-year period from 2012, he claimed almost £40,000 to rent another London flat for himself. And then there's the shadow culture minister Chris Bryant. In 2005, he bought a flat in Bloomsbury, central London. But after the rules changed, he moved out and started renting instead. In just two years from 2012, he's claimed just over £35,000 from the taxpayer. Actually, Mr Bryant didn't just buy a flat in Bloomsbury, he bought a penthouse. He used to claim about £1,000 a month in mortgage interest payments, but now, according to this estate agent's website, the modern two-bedroom penthouse apartment with a passenger lift and, and even a porter is rented out for about £3,000 a month. Both Mr Bryant and Mr Murphy did not respond to our request for comment. 25 of the 46 MPs we've identified are Conservatives. Former Health Secretary Andrew Lansley is stepping down as a Conservative MP this election. He jointly owns a Georgian flat in upmarket Pimlico, partly paid for by the taxpayer. But since 2013, he's claimed almost £7,500 for London hotels. Now, £7,000 doesn't sound like very much, especially compared to some of the others. But Mr Lansley's case is different. He also bought a property under the old scheme. But he hasn't moved out to earn a rental income. He's been staying at London hotels to make way for his daughter. So while you forked out for his hotels, she's lived at the property and used it to launch a business. The fact that it's a daughter uh, really sees that he's looking at it from his personal family point of view rather than the interests of the public purse. Andrew Lansley told us he normally commuted from his home in South Cambridgeshire and only stayed overnight in London hotels about once a month. He told us he always sought to minimise costs to the taxpayer and says his expenses claims are entirely within the rules. Ipsa told us the rules about what MPs can claim are robust, fair and clear and there are no loopholes. Some MPs may own properties which they rent out. This, they said, is a matter for them. I'm sure we'll hear all sorts of sob stories about why it's justifiable to do what they've done. But uh, they must know in their heart of hearts that uh, the public will see this as MPs on the make. There's no suggestion that any of the 46 MPs we've identified are breaking the law. But have the new rules designed to clean up the system left taxpayers out of pocket?